Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting things set up right now. We're almost ready to go live. We had just a little hiccup on YouTube, so uh, one moment as I'm rectifying that issue. Just a quick test, making sure that we've got all of our YouTube persons. Looks like it has reestablished finally. Okay, cool. Just in time mm -hmm. too, because we are ready to get into stuff. My goodness, aren't we? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Game stream. I am your host, Eric, your community ambassador. Welcome. I am joined with Gary, our community manager. Say hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Mmm, I love it. I am looking at my audio sounds, and it's weird. So please let me know if everything's coming through correctly, um, <laughs> and if it's if it is uh, anything but not normal. Um, I will make those adjustments accordingly. Uh, otherwise. What we have today is a showcase of what Everspace 2 is by going through the uh, gameplay of a nightmare difficulty session. Um, I'll be doing this for uh, a pretty decent chunk of the stream. Through this process, I'll be answering your questions uh, accordingly. Those questions can be coming from anywhere. So hello to Steam, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Shoot those questions over to us. We will answer them uh, diligently something that we love to do is make sure that you have all the clarity you need to understand what this game is. And right now is the best time to ask those questions because we are during a sale and there's a pretty, pretty nice sales going on. So definitely check out not only Everspace 2 and the offers that we are showing there, but also Everspace 1 with some pretty insane deals. So if you've never purchased the game because you've just always been a little timid on it, it's, it's the best time. 
it's the, the price point is like <laughs> absolutely solid. So uh, definitely go check those out um, on Steam, on GOG, you know, your, your preferred, your preferred uh, location and it'll be great. Um, otherwise, after we're done with this uh, nightmare run session and answering questions, we're also gonna have a little bit of a retrospective over the course of how the year was. Um, originally, I was gonna do like this really crazy thing. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I wanna make sure that you guys understand all of these awesome moments that we have shared together. This was our launch year. It's crazy. In the gaming industry this year, holy cow. I mean, if, if anybody has been paying attention to all the moving parts, it has been wild. And we are so appreciative of having the support from you guys, being able to, to continue doing what we're doing. Like we're in a we're in a pretty decent spot for uh, where all things considered. Uh, and we're happy to be able to pump more juice into Everspace 2, not only with the recent free update, but with another one that's coming around the corner. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, we'll talk about uh, what that future looks like. So we can kind of, you know, iron out some of those sort of thoughts that you might be curious about. And uh, um, we'll go over the timeline a little in a little bit more detail, not much more, uh, just to bring that all together. So cool, excellent. I'm looking over at the chats right now and my goodness, there's a lot of people. I see them Happy New Year's and Merry Christmases and uh, so good. Oh goodness, I, I, it would take a long time to read all of these names. Thank you so much for coming back for like so many names I'm reading that are fresh and new. And I'm seeing a few uh, newcomers. It's great. I love it. I love it. So welcome to everybody. Let's get into this nightmare play session. We are in the clone carrier. We're basically like in the, the loading area of Everspace One right now when we're choosing our ship. Uh, looks a little different because we have a different perspective, but I think that's kind of fun. And we are going to try and uh, do some fun stuff in the rest of this mission chain. And remember, during this session and showcasing what the game has to offer, we will be answering questions. So by all means, shoot them towards us. We'd love to help provide any clarity that you may or may not have. Right out of the gates, Okar Prime Fighters over here. My goodness. Excellent. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna explore the downed carrier for just a little bit. There are a couple fun secrets in the area. One that's kind of beautiful. So I wanna just show that off. And then we will keep moving on with the story. For those who kind of missed how we got this par far and like where we're at and everything, uh, obviously spoilers for both Everspace 1 and 2, honestly. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is definitely the origin point of where you would be starting your runs from Everspace 1. And uh, I love how my ship matches this location too. That was completely <laughs> not- Almost planned. It, it really wasn't planned. I, uh, I actually need to unlock more engine colors, but that's kind of funny how, uh, how it kind of comes together at times. But I love this. I love this scene, honestly, like where you just, you're underneath the ice and you see all of this. I just, I love this. I love these large open yet interior spaces where you have to explore and navigate. Just adds a lot of depth, I feel like, to uh, what we try to accomplish with uh, the level design as a whole. I think Tony's done a, a really good job of bringing this all together, honoring a lot of classic games, you know. I mean, I could honestly go into so many games. Um, the first one that comes to mind for me, though, is Descent. Any big Descent players out there, I want you to raise your hand. Because, man, I played the heck out of that game when I was young. When I was a hui lad. So bright. All right. Eric is going to try and do puzzles. Look, okay. 
right. I I I can, I believe. I can accomplish tasks. I've done it before in the past. I can do it again. There's not much. It's just a nice little area, I feel like. We want to get that sealed um, uh, container. But yeah, really, really happy with how a lot of our worlds have come together. Honestly, I feel really good about them. Now, if I recall correctly, is it up? I can't remember. Maybe it's up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah, the slowdown. Oh. Let's try again. I think it's through this. Is no maybe? Man, I don't know about you, but like hearing the wind and looking at this environment, I'm like, like actually getting colder. <laughs> How's that even possible? That's weird. Oh, there it is. Goodness. I stopped and turned around. I was almost there. All right. I read the comment about you can only investigate things by shooting them. Well, I mean, there's also the interact button, which is rather important, too. I mean, don't, don't neglect that. It's not just about shooting things. Uh, wait. I'm missing a slot. There you are. Flew right by it. Oh my gosh. Right by it. Alright, now we just have to set up the right symbols. I think it's actually in the structure in the middle. Gary, I think I haven't done this puzzle in so long. It's almost like I'm doing it for the first time. <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's a good it's, experience to show. You know, honestly, <laughs> it, it kind of is, though. So, you know, for newcomers who are, like, coming into the experience of Everspace 2, um, we are in more of a late game situation here. Um, we've completed most of the story. Uh, we're starting to uh, not just have to... Uh, blow stuff up and level up. I mean, there's still that aspect of it, but now we also get to be a little bit more thoughtful in these locations and uh, poke around a little bit and explore what nuances there are in these handcrafted environments. All of these locations and these structures, everything was put here with great intent, with great purpose. And um, I can't remember at all even where the hints are for it. It's awesome, which is great. Um, so there's that. That's good. <laughs> I think I've already done that, but definitely can faster. Uh, I'm probably reading that out of context, but if you're referring to the puzzle here and doing it faster, I am confident that you probably could. I might just uh, leave this area if I can now remember how to get out of it. Which I think yeah, is that totally here. wasn't the, the, the context that was in. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was All a right. question from another uh, viewer about doing a speed run in Everspace 1 to Wizard Jerry. Perfect. Oh, here we are. Here we are. I found him. This is what I was looking uh, for. And then there's the one that fell, and it's the I. Okay. So it's S-D-I-Z. There we go. There we go. And of course we have the crystal here, so that means this is the S. Because the pattern is, you know, there's a crystal in the middle of it. Just gotta keep your eyes peeled. It is meant to take a little bit. It requires thought and exploration. It's not meant to just be like, push the colored buttons in a sequence. Red, blue, green. No, it, we, we want you to, we want you to really put together some thought here. All right, S, D, this one's I, and the last one is Z. Almost done. 
If for some reason this doesn't do it, I'm going to uh, blame uh, Michael. We'll <laughs> just move on. There we go. <laughs> Michael's like, what? Oh, that's... Ah, I'm just being a butt. All right. Now we get to shoot this laser. Rebuild this orb glowing thing and everything around us. Ta-da! Solar particles and dark energy. That's going to help establish more of our um, uh, jump points. Now next up is figuring out the way that we came in, which I know is like around a corner. There was a glowy bit, wasn't there? Wait, I'm not upside down in this cave, am I? Oh my gosh. I'm questioning everything. Gary, what is happening? <laughs> 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 Woo! Goodness gravy. Wonderful, great. So yeah, I guess what I'm explaining today is that when you get into an exploration vibe, sometimes you're gonna get lost, which is fine, which is good. Jeez. Here I thought, oh yeah, I'll just do the cave at the opening. It'll be super fast, barely an inconvenience. Oh my gosh. holding my breath right now. So is everybody else, I think. Yeah, I think so. But uh, I mean, I think right now is a really good time um, for a lot of questions to actually come out. I mean, obviously we're showing a little bit of a slower pace section where we are literally we're exploring, right? We're trying to figure things out. Um, and this is going to be part of the experience and it's very much intended to be. Uh, we wanted to bring to light a lot of different aspects of Everspace 2 together, not just go blow stuff up. Like that's a big part of it. Don't get me wrong. We absolutely want to honor that audience and we want to do a lot of fun things on that front. But in regards to um, like the space shooter as a whole, like any, if you guys have played any sort of like space shooter in the past to any semblance of a degree, you'll know that the environments surrounding where you're going have to be executed decently well too. Good place to use the markers. Yeah, oh no, I, I complete, completely agree. I should have dropped a marker when I entered uh, would have made a lot easier to, to exit. I wonder, I wonder, I'm curious, if I do something like this, no, we don't have a follow-up marker. Unfortunate. We do have a, some clever systems where whenever you set a marker, it will show you the next point where you need to move to. Wait, is that a, is that a hole or is that a crystal? That's a crystal. It's gotta be around here somewhere. I need somebody to backtrack in the stream. Tell me where I came in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Across the slowy bits? Is it seriously? That does make sense because it would be an entry into things. This is going down. We need to go up. Oh, this is going, this is going into, no, we need to go out. We need to go out of, where are you at? Oh my gosh. Guys, if I can't figure this out like the next five minutes, I'm just gonna reload my save. We're not gonna do this bit. This is, uh, this is ridiculous. I can't believe it. And I'm only saying that for the stream's sake. Only saying that for the stream's sake. With the ancient cube thing? This bit? No. Nah. We were already we already came over here. No. Joining the stream, Eric is lost. Oh my gosh. Hi Casper. 
I can't I can't believe I've done this. <laughs> this is this is uh my goodness. <clears throat> Hello everyone, welcome to the stream where the developer doesn't know how to play his own game. Wow. Um, this does not happen like hardly ever. And uh, how did I get turned around in this? So much how I move, you get turned around too? Alright, that's probably fair. Alright, we're gonna look in this direction. And then we're going to have uh, Casper guide me home. So while I'm staring at this globe, waiting on instructions. <laughs> Imagine being a dev. I know, right? Oh, gosh. Um, I just want to talk to you guys about uh, this year. Because, I mean, it really has been a, a, an interesting year, all things considered. I mean, we had over a two-year early access period that, um, you know, got so much more attention to all of its systems through a number of worldly events. And through that process, we got so much additional and invaluable feedback. Wait a second. If the, if the, if the runes make a big square and the globe is on one side, go to the opposite side of the square and look up. So over here. Geekbite, you're laughing. Am I doing something wrong? Is this incorrect? No, no, you did everything oh, great. Oh my goodness. It's like it's been here this whole time mocking me. No, that was just the chance. Excellent. But, um, but sincerely, um, it has been one heck of a year for us. Getting a, I suppose you could say, extension to early access was... At first, something that was uh, very frustrating for us, and probably, I imagine, for a lot of our backers, too. And it ended up being quite the blessing, because through that time period, we were able to do so much more with all of you. We were able to receive so much more feedback and criticism of what was working, what wasn't. We were able to see the praise, what you guys were enjoying. Uh, we were able to see uh, what simply was not working. Um, there, there have been a lot of various details throughout this process. And we owe so much credit to you guys for not only your support through backing us, but then also through the support of Early Access itself um, in the form of not only finances, but also through your voice, just sharing the game with others, uh, telling us your thoughts, your feelings, your very heavy laden opinions. <laughs> it's been good. It's really good. And we were able to bring to light so many unique aspects of the game that we actually didn't know we needed. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Getting us this far into these new territories. And now, you know, with the Armed and Dangerous update, expanding the itemization and with the incursions update around the corner where we were talking about legendaries and uh, uh, revamping an in-game system. I'm just really excited for what's going to be next for for uh, for you guys and for us. The whole the whole Kit Kat and Kadoodle or whatever that statement is. <laughs> words. Yeah, words. I like this cutscene. I'm just going to watch it. But, uh... Man, I'm seeing a lot of... I'm seeing a lot of interesting questions coming in. Uh, maybe we should just start answering some questions right away. What do you think, Gary? Uh, I've got a couple lined up. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Uh, first up, we've got uh, Deceivian over on YouTube. Uh, they want to know, uh, in Keone, where did the base environmental effects and hazards come from? Uh, how much is science and how much is kind of gamification? Oh my gosh. Well, I think from the... Um, I'm, here, hang on a second. I'm going to uh, drop the audio of these voice talkers. Voice talkers. <clears throat> Man, we are winning today with words. Um, but uh, yeah, so... When it comes to how we want to bring everything together in the world of Everspace, and this started from Everspace 1, 
The first rule of thumb in any game ever is that you have to make sure that the gameplay experience is going to be satisfying, right? So regardless of realism, there has to be this aspect of because it's fun, right? Then you're bringing in that other aspect of realism to make that immersive experience come together, right? So, um, and I say gameplay and then I was saying realism, it's not really one before the other. They really have to work hand in hand, okay? You've probably heard me in the past say in the streams where I was like, gameplay is more important than story. In most cases, yes, but there are exceptions. And because we have a, a narrative driven experience here, we do have to put a lot of focus on how the story comes together and how the world makes sense to the player. With something like the uh, Keone system here and having been the after effects of a, um, uh, uh, what's it called when the star explodes? Oh my gosh, words. The supernova. Supernova, thank you. There's there's the, um, the aftermath of a supernova. There's like residual energies here. We played around with what that would feel like and how the player would interact with that and what it would look like and we had fun with it. It's not meant to be a simulation of what it would actually be, but rather we used those tools in order to create an interesting environment and some unique challenges for the player uh, to go after those, that completionist nature that's burning in your blood. Yeah, good question. <laughs> good question. Nice. What's the next okay, one? Don't. Um, same from Deceivian again on uh, YouTube. Um, just wondering if we're going to get any kind of sneak peek later on uh, about uh, anything that might be coming next year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, what's to come, and uh, so yeah, there's we're gonna probably address that a little bit in the latter half of the stream. But yeah, we this is something like. Just going through the year as a whole, we also want to talk about, you know, next steps, right? What's around the corner? I think it would be a disservice if we didn't, honestly. So, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that at the very least a little bit. Very least a little bit. Can't remember uh, what his no. ancient word goes. <laughs> All right, go for it. Uh, just last question, really, um, and this one's come from Wizard Jerry, uh, but it kind of ties in with all our uh, physical reward backers who backed us on Kickstarter. Uh, he was just wondering how the art book, etc., and everything was going to be delivered, uh, specifically in the UK. Um, but uh, I can answer that one, obviously, because I live yeah. in the UK. Um, so, uh, obviously, we've sent the items out via DHL uh, originally, I think, in Deutsch. Uh, but for specifically for the UK, it'll probably get handed over to either Parcel Force or the Royal Mail in the UK. Uh, other countries, or wherever you are, you'll probably still be handled by DHL directly. Yeah. That's a good answer. Cool. What other questions we got? Uh, nothing currently. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and just kind of talk on the front of like um, art books. Um, we did have a statement, was it yesterday even? I think it might have been yesterday. Um, just talking about how um, we will have a limited copy of art books to be sold. Um, so if you want a physical art book, we will let you know when those are available for purchase and send you the appropriate links thereof. Um, it's We're gonna need a little bit of time. Like we're, we've uh, only just recently shipped uh, and moved a lot of pieces around to bring everything together. And it's a it's a process. It takes a while. It takes a while. I feel like I'm looking at the end of the puzzle. I'm remembering... I'm remembering... Um, there's a lot that has to be done at the beginning. Ah, oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yep, that is where the cube goes. Thanks, Adam. Um, but yeah. Let's go get the cube. Glad it's marked. Wee. 
one question that's just come in on YouTube um, from Dance over on there. Uh, just wondering, is there any chance of seeing black holes entering into the game? I mean, I suppose there's a chance, um, but that's not really like we could entertain that idea, but it's not really I don't think it's, there's a fruitful conversation there. Me just saying there's a chance isn't, you know, indicative of it actually happening or not. Like, it, it, there's a chance. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think what a better question would be um, and a better answer that I could give you is, are we trying to expand Everspace 2 with a few new unique challenges and events um, and things to just generally do in the game space for its future? And the answer to that, I can say soundly, is yes. We want to bring more, um, more fun into the gameplay experience, and we're looking at a lot of different ways that that could happen. Um, and I also do want to stretch that this is not me like saying, oh yeah, this I'm answering your question indirectly because I can't say the black holes are going to come to the game. No, 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 I, I, I'm, I can't even speak on black holes. It is not something that um, we are really focused on. So truly when I say there's a possibility, I suppose, that's literally the response <laughs> like everybody on the team would be like well uh, maybe <laughs> yeah lots of factors there isn't that fun it's not a fun answer <laughs> Woo! but yeah so wish i could be more detailed but uh but do know regardless of that question uh we would like to bring a little bit more to the table of whatever space 2 has to offer so. ah fun so good all right, now we're almost done with this puzzle, because this one's actually the easier one in the area. <laughs> this is fine. Oh, whoops. Nope. Forgot to move things around. How dare I. Yeah, see, this is where just shooting stuff isn't applicable. There was that conversation earlier. Nope, you have to you have to interact with things, and it's fun. Who doesn't like knocking things around in space? Physics in games is almost always like a yes, please. I enjoy this. And it's no different here. Honestly, one of the most enjoyable things that I do that is incredibly difficult and hard to pull off during a stream, which is why you probably never see me do it. I love throwing debris at enemies during combat and watching them explode that way. It is hard to pull off, especially if you're like lining up a shot as they're flying in the same direction. But man, when you do it, gosh dang, is it satisfying? Ah, oh, if you've never done it before, try it. Cause it, cause like it, it is, it is. Yeah. It just feels good. It feels good for, for all the right reasons, honestly. Mm, it's music. Man, speaking of music, I wish the OST had um, more tracks in it. <laughs> that would be super great. What's that, Gero? You just added 27 new tracks to the OST for completely free, so users who had the OST purchased have access to 27 new tracks? That's pretty impressive. All right. That's pretty neat. Pretty awesome. Get on that. 57 tracks total. I think it's somewhere. Is it? Is it close to four hours or three hours? Shoot. I can't remember now. All I know is that I'm dying to this warden. Yikes. Just heal me up, please. A little bit more. It's like one of my favorite tracks in the game, though. It's just so, so good. <laughs> yeah, Lee's just confirmed it's nearly three hours. Uh, three hours. Uh, Seventeen minutes of music. Nice, thanks, Lee. Tickle your ear. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm glad somebody's not scatterbrained in the stream today. Whew. All right. Uh, 
let's see. The only reason I remember how to go into these structures is honestly because of how it's designed in Everspace 1. <laughs> so good. I imagine somebody who hasn't played Everspace 1, they might actually find some challenge getting into it. Because this, this is a little secret, a little secret hole there, you know? You know? But it is labeled, like there are unique attributes to this. We got that glowing crystal. In general, most of the level design does harken back to those classic roots of the breadcrumbs path, right? So if you're seeing something that looks interesting, unique, or otherwise curious, uh, it's probably relevant to what you're trying to accomplish. I had to un-germify the number a little. No, no, no. Minutes and numbers are the same between America and Germany. That's That, that doesn't change. No, we're... we're <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be thinking about like imperial to metric, but uh, you know it's it's all good. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get out of the Coyote system for now. I definitely want to go back and complete some more fun stuff there, but uh, we're gonna do this first. Um. I did see another question that I'm just gonna I'm gonna answer it anyway because this is normally the question answer period and uh, we didn't get too many, so sneaking this one in. The question from Nomad Nomad over on Twitch um, says, "Are there any hardware optimization issues at the moment? Not that I have any. Um, we have been tracking uh, certain locations and events that occur inside of Everspace Two, um, and we're not going to say we're fixing everything because that's." That would be a very arduous task for us to take on. But we are looking into seeing what is possible, what we can tweak and refine as we continue creating new content, both the free content that will be available um, next year, as well as the DLC. I don't think it would be wise of us to not try and tidy up some details um, as we continue to develop into the game. Um, that would, that would be a shame on us moment. So those of you who are still getting plagued with certain <clears throat> issues regarding like Gilbert Naval Base, for example, we hear you. We know it's frustrating to a degree, uh, some more than others, I suppose. And it's something that's still on our radar. And if we can tweak it and refine it a little bit more, uh, we will find ways to do that uh, accordingly. But do not expect miracles. I gotta say that, I gotta put that down as well. It's not gonna just magically go away. I wish that's how it worked. But uh, unfortunately, it is not. All right, we need to go. Oh, back to. Oh, we have to go back to our base, our home base. Silly me. Why did I go to Prescott? Goodness. My gosh. What about solar versus side real time? Oh my gosh. Spoot Knight, get out of here. <laughs> That's so good. All right, let's get back to our home base. Here we go. <laughs> I just read the chat from YouTube that says, it's important Eric doesn't get YouTube in full context. Looks like we you guys. We are absolutely going to need to craft some material before this engagement, otherwise we are going to get screwed! And I am intentionally saving my um, G key <laughs> for said engagement, you punks, because I know you're all thinking it. Oh, maybe I need to use it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, let's just use one of these. That should, that should clean up a little bit. Yeah! Ooh, blueprint. Nice. That was a lot easier when we use the tools that are at our disposal. Alright. Uh, base is over here. Wow. A blaster? That could be kind of fun. Let's see. Yeah, both of these items, they're just they're just too under. We're only level 21? 
Really? Shoot, we're in a mission chain that I think is like level 25, aren't we? That was level 24. Maybe we shouldn't trigger this yet. Maybe we need to grow. Let's, let's get level 22 really quick. Let's go, uh, let's go complete a task. Some random task. Jeez. I look over at Twitch and says, Eric is severely lacking in DPS. Yes, I am. <laughs> but so long as the stream is not dropping frames, everything's fine. So my brain can be slow. That's not a problem. But if the stream is slow, we got to fix it. <laughs> Have I mentioned it's been a crazy week on top of just the fact that the year has been wild? My goodness. <sighs> Level 16! But... All right, hang on, that's not even, not even worth it. Let's take a quick look at, it looks like we got a lot done in Cedo. Did we finalize? No, we did not. Okay. Um, I'm confident that we've got a number of locations that we can cruise through here to just, we haven't ever been there. Oh my gosh. Okay. No, we need to we need to go back to base and you <laughs> use our rift, uh, not rift the um, fast travel system. Why has it been a crazy week? A lot of moving parts, right? Like there's like I feel like anybody who has any sense of a moderate to high level of demand for their work and getting things accomplished before the end of the year, generally there's a little bit more stress than not, I think. Um, you know, that being said, it's not like, I say stress, that, make, that makes it sound bad. It's not really stress. There's just a lot that we've been able to accomplish um, this month um, and wrapping it all up in a nice neat little bow before uh, we depart for break is, um, not simple, right? There's a lot of details in that, so yeah. Team's been hammering away at a lot of different projects from a lot of different angles. It's rather impressive to see how much we've still accomplished even right before. But um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a bitty busy, busy week. All right, yeah, let's, let's do this location challenge because we get to go through the biomes and that's kind of fun. And also destroy this guy. Let's hope to get those shields down first. Rip. Do a lot more damage, had I. A little closer. All right. Are they not close enough? Ah, dang it. That's a shame. But effective nonetheless. A lot of blueprints. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. What is... Look at all this! This... <laughs> that poor freelancer! Oh shoot, now poor me. Alright, hang on. If only we had an ultimate, yes! Yes! Oh, satisfaction! And <laughs> the JK. Oh, yeah! Oh. All right. All right, all right. I look over the chat and I see Inquisitor bug still isn't fixed, I see. Ah, well, I am not actually running in a dev build today. Um because uh, a number of reasons, actually. But uh, I'm actually pretty sure that we haven't addressed that yet. It's still on our to-do list, <laughs> but we do have it, uh, we do have it listed. Ugh. That's funny. Yeah, a lot of tasks we've been handling as of late. It's been good. All right, let's do this. This is fun. Actually, while I'm doing this, I kind of have a general question for all of you watching. And the question is, 
what are some of your most memorable slash favorite side missions or even full-blown missions from Everspace 2? Like, what stands out, you know? Be and I asked that question because, uh, notably, I actually really enjoy these little drone challenges, these little navigation challenges. It's something that I particularly enjoy. But I want you guys to tell me, what has stood out and you were like, I wish there was more of this, or I really liked that. Let me know. The first thing I see is killing jellyfish. <laughs> All right. I see Fallon Pango quest chain, hands down. Oh yeah, the, um, the parasite. Yeah, that, one, that one's fun. But keep sharing. I want to I hear from all of you. Every single one of you, if you're in the chat, tell me what has been something you've really enjoyed, something that has stood out to you, and you're just like, man, I just loved this bit in Everspace 2, and I just wish there was more. Nope. Ah, ah that's going to hit me. Yep. Yeah. All right, all right. No, I didn't say... I didn't say... This is a request for more of what we're going to add. I'm legitimately just asking you guys what you enjoyed. <laughs> this is not a, tell me what we're going to add more into the game. No, no, no. That's not how this <laughs> works. Y'all are jumping the gun on that front. Woo. But I, it is good to hear that you guys did enjoy the parasite chain. We did have a lot of fun uh, putting that together. Try a different strategy here. Please. And thank you. Alright, working. Where's the where's the Ah okay, alright. Get under the ledge. Thank you. Perfect. One more. Oh, don't you dare, Jeff. Don't you dare, Jeff! Jeff! Gosh dang it, Jeff. Jeff! <laughs> Jeff's off the Christmas card list. I know. It's cool for him. One job, Jeff. Let's draw! Oh my goodness. See, Larry understood the assignment. Maybe not. All right, Larry. All right. Jeez. But I, it's it's great to see how many chatters there are today. Like, holy cow, my, my entire right side of my monitor is just full of of chat it's it's wonderful thank you so much for everybody participating in this question this is great i see i see gang wars in there um where they're impersonating them to start a conflict uh is that the gang wars one? Oh yeah okay yeah that's it oh the, he's on the freaking i got too close that's my that was my bad skill issue <laughs> You just kind of like being on your own and exploring new places and finding new ways to play the game. Dude, seriously, that's where I get a lot of enjoyment. I just try not to do too much of that during the streams because I know that sometimes that can be a little bit uh, not fun to watch, right? Like it's so much better to experience for your own as opposed to watch somebody try over and over the same exact dang thing because they keep failing. So uh, we're going to give this like a moment or two longer. And if we can't do this, then we're going to bounce to the next thing. Goodness. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely feel that. And I definitely agree. There's, I, I have so much fun and uh, just going around and, and just doing stuff and not really even being bound to like a story mission or a side mission, even just like doing my own thing. Um, <clears throat> like the, um, Unknown signals, for example. Oh man, I, I really enjoy just cruising to random places and seeing what generated, what challenge it is, and then accomplishing the tasks at hand. Just feels good. It's just fun. All right, I need to I need to not go that direction. Okay, good, awesome. <laughs> we keep moving in that same direction. All right, good. <gasps> no. Okay. No! <laughs> no! Oh my gosh, get away from me. Ah! Oh jeez, we're on the opposite side, please, no! Gee, we're so close. 
That was so dumb, but we made it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, that's what we're here for, right? That's the content we're looking for. I could have kissed those. I could have just smuckered up and plopped them right on the forehead. That was ridiculous. All right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, see what you have to look forward to. You try this game and you want to go after some of these little side challenges. Sure, you can you can fly around and blow stuff up all the time. But look what else the game has to offer. We got these fun little challenges that everyone can make fun of if you're doing a live stream. Oh gosh, it's so good. Oh, whoops. The, the wind caught the drone and uh, pulled it. All right, mm -hmm. here we go. <laughs> All right. Let's top off these fools. Should be more than enough just from our legendary alone to handle this. There we go. Gosh, we are so close. We need like half an experience point. Come on. Come on. Give it to me. Of course, they got their shields up. Yay! Oh, and we got a legendary drop! Oh, that's actually really good for us. We seriously needed something. Oh, that's great. We did get one that's unfortunately not paired well with the Sentinel. Um, <clears throat> we got the SH8495 from Matt Buck, one of our backers. Thank you, Matt Buck, for your legendary creation here. Um, basically, it removes the shield itself, but then gives you ionized carapace. Um, and this thing is actually super powerful. Um, man, I, uh, it, I, we can't use it on Sentinel though. It just, it's just not, it's not applicable for this particular build and, and the features that, uh, the Sentinel has, but, uh, you know what? We got the level that we wanted. So now I'm feeling a bit more confident moving into that, uh, mission, which will probably still not end well. And that's fine. We got to do it at least once. And then we can move into more questions and also the, Retrospective from the year. I think that would be fun. So, here we go. Oh, I missed the first person mode question. I, I will give a, a demonstration. Absolutely give a demonstration, my friend. <laughs> Excellent, Adam. Beautiful, beautiful. So this is the first person mode, um, and it does take into account all of the actual positioning of the ship and everything. In fact, the cockpit is rendered even when you are in third person. <coughs> uh, so like, it's all actually here. It's it's all there. And based on what ship you are in and the, the, like the modules that you're using, you will see them in kind uh, with where they're at. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun feature. Um, the way I'm looking around is by holding the alt button, but there, we also do have track IR support. So uh, your camera would know that you're moving your head and you could you know, do the whole thing like that. Um, I guess I should also mention we do not have and will not be uh, doing VR for the game though. Um, but yeah, track IR support, holding the alt button, you can get that bit of additional immersion from that point. Uh, but yeah, you can swap your viewpoint on the fly as well. Um, and there's the far away. This is this is far from your ship. This is close to your ship. So you can see it's much, much closer. Kind of gets it out of the way of combat a little bit more, but does take up more of the bottom of the screen. Obviously, first person with cockpit and then first person without. Like true descent mode right here. All right. All right. Look who's back. Skip. 
quick restock. <laughs> Give me those cruise missiles. Um, what are explosions like in the cockpit? Is that the follow-up question? Is there a self-destruct button? <laughs> nope. Uh, well, actually there is. Um, if you press Alt F4, um, completely wipes uh, and you have to reload your save by loading the game back up. That's the... Uh... <clears throat> oh, and Bearded Frog also commented the same, but yes, obviously being cheeky. So um, let's see, let's mark all the scene, um, tidy up our inventory a little bit here. Gotta get a game plan on how we're gonna overcome this next challenge. Cause this, this challenge is actually a doozy when you're under leveled on freaking nightmare mode. Uh, so let's see what we can accomplish here. Corrosion missiles are not actually a bad option. Um, we need to compare with the <clears throat> EMP cause that's not fair to compare with these with the freaking cruise missiles. Um, but there's a, I feel like there's a good idea here so we can just kind of hit and run. Shamefully, we have not purchased any other ships. Like we are stuck with this, we can't change. Uh, but thankfully, we also were able to uh, navigate this situation. We, upon our own playtesting, we recognized that if we triggered the event from launching from your hangar, that it would suck greatly. Cause then when you reload your save from the hangar, you're forced and locked into this mission chain. We did not want to do that. So that is actually why when I launch here, the mission does not start. It requires us to do this very simple drag and drop thing, which starts the mission chain. So um, I am, uh, yeah, let's just, let's try it. Let's just try it once. Let's try it once, let's, let's, we'll see how bad it is. Spoiler alert, we are going to die. But let's embrace it. Let's embrace the death, embrace the challenge. All right. I'm also going to increase audio here a little bit because it's this is fun. We'll watch this cutscene. This is fun. I need to place turrets. Oh shoot, I did. I should have placed turrets. Silly me. Damn, they're here. And they brought the big guns. I, have to take I like how all of you are observing the things that I should be doing. As my big focus <laughs> is just making sure your comments are being read and your questions are being answered. Whew. Now this was a good mission. Hey, great to hear that. I also enjoyed this one. Um, I don't necessarily know um, the direct inspiration for this mission, but um, I have I get some Star Star Fox vibes from this. Like if you go back to Star Fox sixty four, do you remember? Uh, I think it's what is it called? It's the Z location. It's like Sector Z or something, where the great fox is in the middle and then there's these massive missiles that are coming at you and you're you're tasked with like fighting the enemy and then bringing down the missiles like basically on a timer those are the vibes that i get with this and i i love it and the music oh my gosh hang on a second i'm gonna you know what we're gonna shut up and we're just going to let's just embrace this okay
Gosh dang it. Move my buff. Too close, they will blow you up. The big detail here is not holding still. Because if you hold still just like that, all your shields and armor will evaporate just like they did for me. Oh shoot. Goodness. <laughs> this is where my love of flat ah! comes in. Oh yeah, goodness. That would that would be nice. Ah! I think I got enough of them. Okay. More turrets, more turrets. Good. Poor ghost taking the bulk of it. I'm incredibly proud of myself right now. I thought this was gonna be heckin' harder. And we had we had just the right build for this. I've seen that before. Hey, wait. You can't just leave me here. I can't help but see the 
poetic justice in this. Remember when you left us in the lurch, Callahan? Whatever. You suck. And I wish I would have known a lot sooner how much you suck. I would have sent you to your death before you got any delusions. I'm giving you this chance to walk away, Callahan. You're nothing without GNB. Without that little bit of power they give you, you ain't worth scrap. You're pathetic. Screw you and the shit can you rode in on. Watch out. The artillery. Eduardo, turn off the auto lock. Let's turn down the. <coughs> Woo! Bring it back down. Bring it back down. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth. It seemed the obvious thing to do, all right. Wonder where my clone counterpart was in all this. I suspect up to much worse. Let's meet inside. Goodness, we have there. There are just these. Oh gosh. It's it's hard for me to compliment the game because obviously, like. I, I work here. <laughs> Gosh, I love some of these little moments that we have. Ah, but kind of a big moment. Not sure if we'd be able to survive another assault like that. I'm sorry, Ben. It's my fault. I love him through. My, my apologies. There, in the DMZ. there was a chat. I was answering questions. There's a British person in my ear. It's. it's... What about this guy? <laughs> you sure about him? I want to know, he's Ben made of mostly aluminium. I was, I was going to say, he's probably fixing some aluminium elements that were busted because of me, but, you know. It's good, it's good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Guys, if you are enjoying the content, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, we do actually appreciate if you thumbs up the video, you like us, you follow us, all that type of stuff. We don't do this to these streams for monetary gain. Uh, it's more just exposure so that we are able to continue doing what we do to serve you, the community. We do these streams for you. We do this to answer questions, to make sure that your queries are getting responded to, to make sure that you know what's going on through our development cycles, and also to have some fun. Exactly so it does mean a lot. Be here. Like does mean a lot. Mine used to say, plans are for fools. We're about as random a group as the Belt of Greats has to offer. Heck yeah, we are. All different backgrounds. So good. All different races. Some of us are outcasts. Some are screw ups. Some are lost with no way home, and some told they don't belong. But we all found our way to each other, and we all belong here. We have this base thanks to a man named Dax Bashar. He died before most of you arrived. But he taught me a lot about trust and esteem. That's our strength. The respect we have for each other. Because the enemy we're up against has no regard for anything but profit and power. Let's teach them a lesson and make the DMZ a better place. Are you guys in? Hell, you know I'm totally behind you. Oh, Let's kick so. some GMV butt. It is the righteous thing. Fun. All right. I think this is a good pause moment um, so that we can answer a slew of new questions that have been coming in. Um, and uh, we might also take this moment to, timing-wise, it's, uh, it's fine. Yeah, we'll also take this moment to, whenever we're done with the questions, we're gonna jump over and do a little bit of a retrospective of the year and how Rockfish has uh, really kind of come a long way um, not only because of our incredible team, of course, but also because of you, because of your support, because of your uh, thoughts, considerations, concerns, all of that stuff. It's been one heck of a year. I'm going to skip this. <laughs> Important words are being shared. Nah, nah, Excellent. So let's go ahead and save our game. And uh, let's uh, let's start answering some questions. So, Gary, what do you got for me? And specifically, um, if you could, really quick, see if there's any questions that I could give a quick demonstration in game to be able to answer, if you don't mind. Um, I haven't got anything that's specific 
uh, in game that you could show currently. Uh, although one question kind of does relate to when we're holding the energy spheres that you've just been doing in the oh. uh, in the big battle there. Yeah. Um, this was from Thormic Theory over on Twitch. Uh, He's just wondering, is there any way that you can do to help with the visibility when carrying an energy sphere or an ancient room, for example? Uh, it was the only truly frustrating experience they had with playing the whole game in first-person perspective. Wow, that was the only thing. Wow, that's that <laughs> um, that's pretty crazy, but also pretty understandable. Um, so, uh, so you are aware, it's not necessarily something I can really show uh, too much because I'm not really near anything of that nature, but. Um, what I can say is that this was a topic that we had internally um, during early access. And whenever we were going through ways to help make it easier for the player to understand what they're looking at or where they need to go using any type of UX at our disposal whatsoever, including but not limited to uh, various new iconographies and highlighting objects, orange, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, we also evaluated the state of holding onto objects when you are looking directly out of the ship. Um, there was a lot of different ideas as to what we could do, and all of them were incredibly heavy when it came from a technical standpoint because of the foundations that we'd already set regarding many other technical details that were coming together at the time. So had we redone that entire process would have been, unfortunately, a very long time to fix just one element of the whole of the game. And when you're on a time crunch, well, I shouldn't call it a crunch. That's a really bad word to use, actually. When we have very specific deadlines that we're trying to hit, right? We could not deviate from those specific tasks that we had to hit the promises that we made that we had to ensure that the game was going to be at the quality that we wanted it to be at, and to also make sure that we were taking care of the community in the majority of those requests. And unfortunately, that one did have to get cataloged into, it's not gonna have that much effect based on the amount of energy that we'd have to put into it. And I'm really sorry to have to vocalize that to you because you're right, it is a little bit of a frustrating experience. Um, and should we have the means to crack that door open um, as we continue to work on Everspace 2? It is technically known, listed, and something we would like to do if we should find that extra time to do it. And it's one of a lot of different things that are kind of like that in the game because there's so much to this. So I do appreciate your patience and understanding as you played the entire game through first person dealing with that. Like, wow, that's amazing um and i'm also glad to know that it's more than possible to play the game like that and still not have to deal with a tremendous uh gameplay experience that fails right like it's there's still very succeedable um but yeah it's definitely one of those things where i think everybody wishes like the team and, and the community wishes could be tweaked a little bit further uh, it comes down to a lot of those technical details um so yeah one of those things. One of those things, unfortunately. Mm. So. Uh, YouTube again, Slurring Tetson uh, would like to know, uh, Everspace 1 had one expansion pack. Um, has there been any consideration for being more than one for Everspace 2? Yeah, there's been consideration. Yeah, I mean, we, we want to... We want to do, you know, what we can to Everspace 2, but um, regarding what those plans are going to look like, because we haven't locked anything in place on that front, um, we'll make those announcements when we get there. Because right now, I mean, what we've communicated is what we're doing. So what is around the corner is a free update this next year. And then we have DLC, premium DLC, planned for end of year territory. Okay? So uh, should more show up into that picture, We'll let you know. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. We'll play it out together, all right? Good question, though. All right. Next question. Uh, Wizard Jerry uh, over on YouTube would like to know, uh, is there a particular location you like the most in the DMZ? Particular location <laughs> I like the most. Man. You know, there's a number of locations that I think Tony did a, just a fantastic job delivering a visual just beautiful experience to, to behold um let me uh let me go back 
go to the map really quick and just kind of evaluate and maybe pick out a couple. I think the Kite Nebula, um, Aethor 1, with how rich the biology life is and how detailed the environment actually became, um, that's one that I really enjoy. It's, uh, there's a lot of secrets there. I mean, you can even see it on screen, I've got 9% and I, like, I barely touched anything, but it is so different from a lot of what the rest of the game is. It just feels like you're into this new world and exploring something, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's truly unique. I love the way that that one does come together. Um, I think Kosh Orbit is an easy one. Like it's, it's you know, you're, you're also getting to see something pretty new there. Um, regarding the Vortex, um, I'm actually a big fan of just like the outlaw stronghold in this massive base in the middle of this asteroid field uh, with various little floating bits surrounding it. Divina Gas Orbit, the skybox is pretty. Um, let's see, a couple other highlights. I mean, I think Prescott is incredibly noteworthy. I think a lot of people are gonna, like they remember Prescott because of how detailed it is, because how much stuff to, to do there. Um, so it's it's gotta get a, a, a unique sort of mention in all of this. Uh, but I am also a fan of Noah Damara's Starport. I think that it's, the, the scope of this just makes me very pleased. Um, it's a lot of fun. First time that you go to Cephas Downs is also really cool too, going underground and exploring those bits. Uh, Drake, I think, has a couple of really good points, but I'm a big fan of Letho Starport as a whole. Um, I think that both um, Mota and Gilbert are fantastic locations, right? Because you get this very rich, impactful environment that you have to navigate around to. Um, so Gilbert Naval Base, as well as Gilbert Shelf, um, the Motor Rift and the uh, Alpha Draco Thermal Plant, all, all four of those locations are just so pleasing to the eye. The final location, um, I also think is uh, very visually pleasing. And in Keone, um, I do like the way that the Vapor Cloud um, looks and feels and going through those challenges. But honestly, my heart goes to uh, the one with the research station over here next to Zethi's. Um, I think it's this one. The lighting in this area is just chef's kiss. Like I love how it comes together. Um, you just like fly by that station and the lights just hitting it and you're seeing like all these asteroids and, and it's like shrouded in this sort of like gas gaseous area yeah i i could speak i could speak on areas that i love for a very long time because like even when i said that and then i'm going back i'm like man but also zarkov border patrol like am i right like goodness gravy that one's uh it was too good of a question i'm gonna cut myself off let's get some more questions accomplished <laughs> but the short of it is there's a lot of favorites i i think that tony and the rest of the team has truly brought together some impressive uh areas uh, cool. Right. Uh, I've got a question again on YouTube. Uh, the YouTuber flying in with a question tonight. Twitch, Good. they're putting you to shame. Um, Call GRXL <laughs> over on YouTube. I would like to know, uh, what made you originally decide to deviate so heavily from the Everspace 1 style with the roguelite? Uh, oh, and yeah. is, how did the scope idea of Everspace 2 come to be? Yeah, no, I think I think that's actually a really uh, really beautiful question to ask, and um, the answer is is relatively simple, surprisingly simple, and it's that Everspace Two is much more in line with the vision of the game we wanted to make when Rockfish Games was established. There's a long story as to why it didn't happen first, though, um, mainly because there was literally no funding at all <laughs> to make a game. Um, and there was a very limited team. Um, the start of Rockfish was around eight to 10 individuals uh, and Michael poured his own money into the company in order to establish anything at all. From that point, it was kickstarted uh, by many supportive backers like yourselves, giving us the ability to make Everspace possible at all. And that moved us into um, the territory of the franchise where we wanted to make this like sort of nice arcadey poppy experience that could be played over and over again. So roguelike fit the formula where we could also reuse assets, save some money since we didn't have a lot, right? Um, and build ourselves up, strengthen um, our forces there because 
we are, these veterans are coming together in this industry, like doing powerful things on the PC and console side, having left the mobile industry. So we had all these tricks and tools of the trade to bring forward heavily optimize some beautiful looking ships. Um, and that was the starting point of Everspace One. And from there, uh, the, the success of Everspace One uh, moved it into this territory of now we can pursue this massive vision, Michael's vision of having a, an open world space game where you can pick your ship, you can customize it, you can fly out wherever you want. You can have these space battles, you can do jobs, you can do some commodity trading. You've got this uh, narrative design that's gonna guide you through a lot of different things. So if you're a story person, you're gonna be able to do that. If you're a completionist, we're gonna have lots of stuff to do scattered all over the place. Uh, and then if you like customization and itemization and you know making things your own, a lot of emphasis on this territory as well. So a really big answer for you from such a simple question, even though I said the answer was relatively simple, there's just a lot of details there. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's the long and the short of it, I suppose. So good stuff. <laughs> Great answer. Uh, sticking with YouTube, uh, J.R. Panciotti uh, would like to know, how high does the credit counter go? Is Andy in the chat by chance? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't have a clue. I do not have a clue. Um, I don't know if there would be any sort of limitation. Because, I mean, this is built out in Unreal Engine 4. And, yeah, I, I don't know the technical side of that. The answer is high. Yes, that's that's a good response, Flory. The answer is high. <laughs> it is more than zero. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, what else have we got? What's another question? Right. We've got one from a, a user, a new user called Daniel over on YouTube. Now, oh. I've had to translate this one from German, so I do apologize if no this translation is a little bit wonky. Um, they said that it's, they, it's a great game and they would love some more DLC and let the quality of life continue to take care of the, of the game. Yep. Uh, they do feel like the HDR function is particularly just a gimmick and it's not recommended to switch on. Um, are we looking to see like HDR, obviously it's like experimental, etc. but right. uh, is it just going to stay that way? Yeah, and we made a statement on it too. Um, so maybe Michael could even find the statement and link it to you. But uh, the, the short of it is that HDR is uh, experimentative in uh, Unreal Engine 4. And it, it, yeah, it doesn't go beyond that. It is not complete. It does not have everything panned out in the way that a developer uh, really needs it to be. Um, and we've done what we can with it. And then we had to make some decisions of uh, where we had to move forward with it. And it was not worth the time and energy to pursue that route. Uh, if we're gonna do something, we do wanna do it well. And it's not something that we could do well. So that's kind of hopefully the short of it. Um, Michael might have an additional de uh, ditty on that, um, but uh, overall, yeah, that's going to be uh, that's going to be it. So, yep. Uh, let's do one more question. And I'm going to pan over to do a little bit of a retrospective. Okay, okay. Um, I know this one's been kind of answered a little bit earlier, yeah, but right. I think uh, SWAT B2 over on YouTube uh, joined after we'd obviously answered it. Uh, yeah, but I'll ask the question anyway. Uh, is there any chance that you guys could bring back the natural hazards from the first game, like the darkness, mm. black hole, stuff like that? Because uh, yeah. they really enjoyed the random element of that first in the first game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely like I, I love that question. I think it's a it's a good question, and there's clearly a desire for that. Um, we've seen that question come up, uh, you know, here and there from the community um, at varying intervals. And you know, through the early access phase, there were a lot of reasons why we didn't want to pursue those directions with having specific handcrafted locations that you're traveling back and forth to. Um, creating sort of like random environmental hazards in that process means that they are no longer random. They have to be very intentionally placed. And while we could do that, that's opening up a pathway to even more errors, concerns, technical challenges, limitations of this overarching vision that we have. And that is ultimately why we opted to navigate around that and instead focus on proper and uh, streamlined level design that's bringing you through uh, these, you know, fairly rich environments, I would say, over 100 handcrafted locations. Um, and uh, through that, there's a lot of challenges to be had just from a navigation side. And if uh, you need a reference point, just go back to the beginning of the stream. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. 
It's a kind of a big answer there as well. Um, these are great questions. Thank you so much. You guys are you guys are all kind of awesome today. It's a beautiful way to close out the year with you all. It's really good. And speaking of the year, let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break. I'm gonna pull up some uh, notes uh, and we'll be able to follow along actually. So if you're interested in seeing what I'm seeing, I'm gonna give you some links. Uh, well, maybe not links. I'll just tell you where you can technically go because it's not that hard. <laughs> Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna just talk about some stuff and uh, yeah it'll be good it'll be good. And here we are. It really, what didn't take that long at all. Didn't even take that long at all. So if you want to follow along, um, I'm actually inside of Steam, the announcements. You can scroll all the heck down to when Everspace Two was released. Information, the release information. Uh, was released on January 30th. This was the first messaging that we had uh, for Everspace 2 uh, this year. And I'm not gonna play like all the videos and stuff. Uh, but wow, if you guys don't remember this teaser, um, it was so short and barely revealing of anything. And then we start getting into these details of the 1.0 release date announcement with Keone as the highlight. We had the release date reveal and the story trailer. We had the visions, price changes. Like there was so much that came with just ironing out the details of 1.0. There was so much of the game that hadn't even been teased that when we ended early access and jumped into 1.0, the, the game was just transformed. And I think a lot of you actually, a, a lot of those in the chat uh, can probably uh, relive that experience as I'm kind of like scrolling through this and like, oh man, I remember whenever we were hearing about these things and they were so curious and it was so interested and just like, and how it just moved forward so fast. Oh my gosh. I remember like we had this release date announcement and then in the studio, we're just like frantically putting things together. Like, okay, what has to be done? What has to, what, what's, what, what is no longer like on the table? We push everything off the table. And we're like, is this finished? No, no, get it finished. Is this finished? Yes, next. Is this finished? And it was just, oh my gosh, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I remember, you know, about the save game wipe and there was a little bit of controversy around <laughs> it, I suppose. Uh, you know, the Linux and Mac support, you know, and everything that's happened from that. Um, lots of, of hard decisions being made just at the start of the year, the, the beginning of this year already. And then you see this huge, this is just, what? These are all the bug fixes. These are all the tweaks. These are all the features that were implemented between early access to what? Look at this nonsense. What? Hans Christian, I'm so sorry, but you did a great job powering through so many of those bugs. Like insane, absolutely insane. And lots of details of, you know, potentially what's to come too. And it just, gosh, so much news just shared in such a short amount of time. We were even talking about what comes next all the way back at the beginning of the year. And you know what? Now we're here. Now we're here. Like, look, just all of these incredible things and systems and like even going back. Look, look this is a, it's literally called looking back. Oh, whoops. Um, literally called looking back from the Kickstarter um, and watching the very initial Kickstarter video, which I think I want to do. I can't believe I clicked to lose that. I'm so sorry. Um, let's just let's watch this. Let's let's watch this together. Um, maybe not blow our ears out though. Uh, no sound. Ah, now I I could have sworn I set this up correctly whenever I prepped the stream. Ah, well, all right. Well, if there's no sound, no big deal. Uh, basically, uh. Michael, you look great, man. Goodness gravy. Um, talking about Everspace 2 and the project thereof, bringing things together, closed captions available. We could do that. Jumping ahead. We got like 
got, we got Kevin here uh, talking on the front of like our beautiful missions in the world that you're going to be invested in, and then these crazy like sequences and and then Casper, where, where's Casper? Casper, where are you at? Look at this guy. Look at this man. This project manager now, project producer, senior producer, um, just like giving you all the latest information on what Unreal Engine 4 had to offer. We're going through all these details. Um, and just this still of a screenshot, I mean, you can even still see how much has changed from a single shot from so long ago. It is crazy. Like the night and day difference, absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. Oh, I just saw Hans Christian say, I also did a good job of putting the bugs in in, in the first place. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look, it's, it is well known that for every bug that is squashed, five new bugs emerge. That's uh, the process. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, uh, words spoken by this guy. Uh, look at the hanger even. Jeez. Oh my gosh. How far things have come. Crazy. Crazy to think about. I am so sorry. That's not an attractive photo of you, Uva. You deserve better than that. <laughs> there we go. That's much better. Uva, creative director helped iron out uh, and guide a lot of the narrative uh, design process, uh, building out the world, a lot of the lore. Oh my gosh, so many details. And then this was memed, I think, uh, by some community members as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. And then this was also, this was the first reveal too. This little snippet right down here in the end. This was the first reveal of any land-oriented territories that could also be uh, ventured to. Um, nobody knew that we were going to be going planet side at all. And, and, you know, it's crazy, crazy how we were bringing all this together just from a freaking YouTube video. Super cool. Super stinking cool. Um, we have the PC launch right here. Don't worry, we're not going to watch all the videos. And yet, even still, like after we got through these, I'm going to call them hurdles to bring this all together, we're slapping things down with tweaks and bug fixes, just like moments, like just literally moments, uh, bringing things together. This was April 18th. This is just a couple of weeks after full release. And look at the stinking list. That is not a small list. And we're talking about the in progress stuff and the more that we're doing and the freaking bringing everything to Game Pass accordingly for a parody and the legendaries and the ancient rifts and blah, blah. It's insane. Absolutely nuts. And as we progressed through, um, as we progressed through the year, I mean, we had, we had various events too. Um, for example, we had um, GDC. I'm gonna sneak Lee over here. Hi, say hi, Lee. Um, this is Lee. This is over in GDC, where we had uh, a little booth to share uh, in the little Made in Germany section while Michael was greasing some palms behind the scenes. Uh huh. Good stuff. Uh, solid, solid material um, going all the way back there. We had PAX East as well. Um, uh, here's a great shot of Gary, honestly. Look at that. Look at this man. Look at that joy. <laughs> we need to celebrate this. This is beautiful. What a great that chapter. Was after a very long first day, if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Goodness gravy. And this, this, this gives you some sense of my height. I know a lot of you guys d might not understand what uh, six foot nine means, because uh, uh, I don't know the true conversion that is into meters. Um, but I am, I am a large man. Uh, and we yeah. had a great booth. And we had so much fun. This is uh, this is Roy right here. He goes by the handle 31 Fox. Definitely helped us out a ton as well, uh, bringing everything together. But we had such a large booth. Um, I'm doing quick maths right now. 12. We had 12 yeah, slots. 12, yeah. And we had this really cool uh, location, which I don't think I included the photo. Shame on me now. Um, but we had this really cool location where when you were actually entering into PAX, you could see the Everspace 2 banner. Like it was awesome. So good. So good. And this was this was a fresh new banner too. So there's a lot of excitement on that. Lots of excitement. Um, and then we kept, you know, moving forward through uh, the year. More things happened. Lots more bugs uh, squashed and created, I suppose. 
<laughs> um, and we started getting into a lot of the details that we recognized were needed into the experience based on your community feedback. Like a lot of a lot of this material, a lot of these bug fixes and tweaks, well, mainly tweaks. Bug fixes were just kind of necessary, but a lot of the tweaks, um, we were actively receiving you. And a lot of these figures and these, these changes that you're seeing on screen, it's because of you. It is because of you and how we got Everspace to the point that it needed to be. This is insane. This is the, these are not short lists, okay? The, the, the tiny text on a screen um, that, that is covering so much content that we were continually adjusting, tweaking, changing to Everspace 2. This is before, this isn't even the free content update. <laughs> this is just adding a little bit of stuff to the game, tweaking, refining, adjusting, because it would be good for the game. Both because we wanted to keep adding love to it, but also because so did you. So much, so much. And now we're getting closer to like the, the end points. You know, we get to the armed and dangerous update, uh, the console release itself. And we had a, a, a nice bump in individuals turning their heads and going, what is this Everspace 2 thing? And you guys were on it. A lot of the community spaces, you know, Gary and I are running around, we're making sure people are taken care of. And so were you. Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. People pouring into the Discord asking questions and you guys were like, get out of here, screw you. Uh, wait, no, that's not right. Uh, you you were like embracing them. You were saying like, oh my gosh, it's great to have you. This is what you can do. Uh, if you have questions, this is who you need to talk to. You can send a message here, you can do that. It's like, shoot, Gary and I just needed to hang up our community manager badges because you were doing all the work. You were, you were phenomenal. Seriously, I like, and, and guys, if it sounds like I'm like brown nosing or something, I guess to a degree, maybe I am because of how much you guys did through this year. I, I'm, I truly am not trying to exaggerate here because there was a huge effort, not only from the side of what we were doing internally to bring this all together, like the Armed and Dangerous update. A lot of this content, like we had a lot of powerful suggestions internally and from you guys. A lot, so many, to bring this all together for a nice wrapped up package to deliver. And we were able to get it out the door, both for PC uh, players, as well as the console audience in a fairly timely manner. You know, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's always fun. And then we're even slapping in more beyond that. Look at all the, let's just freaking, look at this armed and dangerous update. This is nuts. This is nuts. This is a free update, people. We did this because we can. And because you kept pouring your love into the game. I'm still scrolling. Like, holy cow. So when I am splurging and, you know, saying these sort of thank yous and like talking about the community experience, guys, I hope that you can see it actively. Like I'm not playing pretend here. I'm not, I'm just, just not just going, oh yeah, no, the, the community is good, buy our product. Like you can, you can actively see the work that you have done, that everyone surrounding this game has accomplished together to make this game shine, to be the best it can possibly be. So. When I say thank you from Rockfish Games for bringing us to where we're at, I mean it with every single ounce of my soul. You guys are incredible. So thank you. Thank you for everything to get us to this point. And I'm so excited there's more to come. There's there's more to come, guys. We are not done. Ah! Just nuts absolutely nuts. So for those of you who have missed it, um, I think I have a better screenshot of the, uh, oh, I didn't prep it. That was the last thing I was going to do before the stream started and I didn't do it. Uh, well, don't worry about that. But, um, but the, oh, I can click it. Yes. No, I can't scroll down. <sighs> Unfortunate. But <clears throat> this tiny moment on the screen right here, this, this section spring 2004, uh, is showing that we are going into the uh, going into this territory for incursions and we are working on new legendaries and that we are adding more modules for the ship customization more fronts more engines can we call it fronts 
I like to call them bodies because it's kind of like the full middle section at, at, for a lot of the ships, but you know, the fronts, the engines, the backs, the rears, like we're adding more. We've got in-game content that we are looking towards to, you know, refine and uh, establish a bit more dominance for those of you to uh, experience Everspace 2 longer, right? For those of you who have stuck around, you did the story and you were like, I want to do more. I want to customize more. I want to see more. I want to complete more. This is going to be an update you're really going to appreciate. Like you're, the, the casual audience out there, if you're just going for the story, um, I'm glad the Armed and Dangerous update has, has assisted you in a lot of capacities. Um, if you continue pursuing into the game of Everspace 2, this update is really going to be for you. Okay? And of course, there's going to be bug fixes and, and new bugs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just why in the world? Look at all of these changes and details and freaking it is absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. And then we're here. And we're here. Here we are, the end of the year stream. We got this uh art palette of books. Wait, was was there a picture of the art palette of books? Maybe not. But you can see that obviously there's a book here. This is the, the art book. It's it's being distributed as we speak. Some of you have already received it. Uh, others are, many of you are still waiting. Um, and then we're also going to have these uh, available for purchase. So if you didn't back at a level to get the art book, but you want it, uh, that will be available. The physical copy of it. Um, also do keep in mind that the digital version of the art book is available right now. Um, and I believe that's, it's also on sale, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Yep. Okay. 20% so, off. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. Um, wow. Freaking, the, we scrolled a long time just getting through all of this. We also had a backer party um, where we um, met a, a, a slew of you uh, that really just had so much love to share. Um, now, I didn't, um, I don't want to show any pictures of backers um, because reasons, uh, but I do want to go through just like some shots of like the team because uh, it was fun. Like it was a lot of fun. Um, I also wanted to share this photo too. Oh, look at that. Look at Gary. Oh, so happy. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes, I got married this year to he my got, wonderful wife, Emily. Married. It was like right before the backer party, wasn't it? It was like... Uh, yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, 3rd of August. Literal days before, yeah. So... I better not forget that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just like so many, so many incredible things. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go through a, a slew of screenshots. That, why is this white? Um, gonna go through a slew of screenshots that we had from the backer party and just kind of like uh tell you who a couple of the guys are i don't have everybody on the team um but just kind of talk about a, a few of them like igmar's here he's talking to a backer a mysterious backer you'll never know who it is uh, but this is the studio space and where all of the magic happens uh igmar is just an absolute mad lad love him to death he's great this is uh some guy who just showed up with wet hair for some reason i don't know and this is uh Hans Christian, he, he is just an absolute mastermind. Also in the chat, um, I consider him a good friend. Honestly, he, he's just, he's such a great person. Um, but also just everything that he brings to the table, he is so focused. If he speaks, you better listen because he knows what's going on. And he brings a lot of, of great information to uh, everything that creates um, Rockfish and Everspace. Uh, this is Lee, he's exactly the opposite. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Lee, Lee actually uh, officially joined Rockfish onto the team, uh, th I think it was this year. Was it the beginning of last year? Shoot. Oh my gosh, I'm getting dates mixed up. But uh, officially joined the team. He was originally helping us uh, through a PR agency. Um, but then he just loved us so much and want didn't want to deal with his other clients that he joined us uh, and has brought a lot of, of strength, uh, especially in dealing with our management <laughs> behind the scenes. So thank you. Um, there's a, this is a nice photo, just like a lot of different things happening. Lots of, of people um, celebrating our launch and uh, the support. Oh, goodness. So good. Uh, and this is, uh, <laughs> this is, this is Marco. Um, 
I just I wanted to keep both of these because it's I just like the way that these photos look. It's like, hey, wanna hear a joke? <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? Because like it's I don't know. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm sorry, Marco. But uh what a wonderful lad. What a wonderful lad. We also have Casper here talking to a number of individuals. Um, I think that's Igmar. Um, I don't know who that is. I can't quite tell. Um, but this is a man with a great plan when it comes to development too. Um, this is Joseph? Joseph. Yep. Joseph? <laughs> yep. He's a newer <laughs> hire. I've only met him once. I'm sorry, Joseph. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah. Um, We've been bringing on a few new hires. If, if you're not familiar with this, um, you should actually check our job boards because we're still looking for a few more. Fancy that. Um, but yeah, Joseph's great. Lots of positive energy, pleasant pleasure to talk to. Um, really good stuff all around. Um, this uh, this is uh, 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 Torben. Torben is <laughs> such, he, this guy, oh, he was so much fun. I, I, Torben, if you're watching, gosh, I love just engaging you because like every time there's a conversation surrounding you, it just suddenly becomes playful and fun and bright. It's this guy is just like a, a beacon of light. It's so good. It's so solid. Um, we also have uh, Gero. Uh, Gero is the music master, the uh, sound wizard. Uh, everything music and uh, everything audio related really comes out of this man. And it's not just him poking some different buttons and adjusting sounds. Like he plays guitar, he plays piano, he plays a, a lot of varied instruments. He's got a bunch of weird ones in the studio space actually. Um, and uh, recently put 27 new uh, enhanced tracks onto the OST, which also were enhanced into the game. Like we're, we're doing a lot still on that front. So if you haven't bought the um, soundtrack, um, it's effectively doubled in size, but the price did not change. So, um, and I, well, actually the price did change because it's 20% off right now. So, ah, um, <laughs> so really big bang for your buck. Uh, should you go that direction? You have this man to thank for that. Um, this one is Jeremy. Yes, he is also somewhat a newer hire. Uh, this man is brilliant. Um, he actually travels a lot, uh, but uh, just, I love that. I love that look. He, he lives in Japan uh, and he's French. Uh, so we like to we like to mix things up and confuse you all. It's good. It's pretty healthy. This is Andy. Andy, this was the best photo I could find of you. I do apologize if you don't like it. Um, Andy is a, a brilliant mind. Um, actually, uh, Andy, it might be the one responsible for bringing me onto the team, uh, just with my conversations with him uh, through Everspace One's development. Um, but he's the one to blame then. <laughs> oh, he's the one that we, yeah, he's the one to blame. Um, I did have to share this photo of Castile's Protection, this t-shirt. Um, uh, this was on the shirt of 10 Storms. Um, and Castile is the name of his son, who he also brought to the backer party. It was awesome. It's very cool. Um, I can't remember who this is. Um, uh, I think, very unfamiliar guy. Yeah. The, the, it's the, security. Yeah, uh, yeah, security. it was the security security agent. I think that's who that was. Yeah, <laughs> so it's probably it's probably right. Oh my gosh, I had to include this one, Matthias, because um, look, it's like the only shot that there, that there was of you. <laughs> this this man's great. Okay, he's he's solid. He's he's in conversation. Probably, maybe he's maybe he's you know had a few drinks i'm not sure he's wonderful okay don't knock him he's a great man <laughs> goodness oh tony we know we're talking about level design so much um this guy truly is is a wizard when it comes to that field over a hundred over a hundred handcrafted environments this guy right here look at him in his straps ah oh, he wears those straps all the time love it he's seriously this guy's very charismatic too and if you walk up to him you just start feeling bubbly and good oh it's just it's a bright shining face so nice we also have christian this is uh this is michael's pairing of all things rockfish it is michael and christian who bring you all the good things from the top if it weren't for these two i wouldn't have a job this game wouldn't exist all of your support wouldn't have been necessary because there would have been nothing to speak on. These guys right here, everything is, it just goes right back to them. Uh, what a brilliant team. And they've been doing this for 
I should really remember the number. I believe it's over 30 years now. Over mm, 30, yeah, 30 years together. They've been a team championing the gaming industry. Wild. Absolutely crazy. So thank you both to Michael and Christian for yeah, everything. And uh, last but not least, this is Casper again. I think I had a, a, a couple of photos of Casper. But this is our senior producer now, um, who had some really cool previous work history to uh, bringing a lot to the table. And um, this man, oh gosh, seriously, he's he's he he is the one who makes sure that the experience coming together is fun. This man is fun. He is the essence of fun. He makes sure everything's like coming together well. If there's a problem, he is just a natural just calming agent. It is nuts. This guy is brilliant. Um, and there's a lot of credit to give him um, on the front of bringing all of the various uh, development processes together uh, according to the vision that a lot of the team put together, you know, obviously uh, directed by Michael. Um, and goodness gravy, what a team. What a team. That these, those were all photos from the backer party. Um, I do have a couple more photos to share. I still don't know why that was in uh, white. Sorry about that. Um, I did ask the team to share me just a couple other photos if they could. And this one, I believe was shared from Marco. Um, if Marco's in the chat, I would love to know a little bit more. I'm assuming this is his cat. It's just an <laughs> assumption. I'm assuming, just I don't a random know. Stray. Maybe it's, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is his home. I don't know if this is the office, you know. But regardless, I think it's a great shot. I think it's awesome. I think it's really good. Um, and of course, there's a lot of stuff on the screens in the background. So I'm fully expecting you all to like zoom in and figure out what are all the details? Sorry, I already scrubbed it. Um, but uh, just what what a great way to work, honestly. I love it. I love the way it comes together. Uh, this shot actually has a great importance to me. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, This this was so good. Um, uh, over here, this is Hans Christian's family. Um, actually, wait, I don't see. Okay. Well, this is, this is his girlfriend at least. Um, then obviously you've got Hans Christian, you have Andy, uh, you have Emily, uh, which I don't actually think I used that word, uh, that name. Um, so hopefully that's fine to use Gary. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. That's, that's my that's, wife. That's Emily. That's <laughs> Gary's wife. Uh, that's Gary. And then there's that weird guy over there who keeps showing up. Um, and <laughs> This was a way that we were topping off uh, a lot of the adventures that we had over in Hamburg um, after the backer party. Um, and seriously, every single individual at this table is so important to bringing to light the entire experience of Rockfish uh, from a level of just being there for you. And I think that's really the beauty that we offer here at Rockfish Games is that we're not just operating like some raggle taggle team <laughs> but we're rather <laughs> we're we're operating like a family unit like we've got each other's backs if there's a struggle like we're there for each other like if like we're gonna make fun of each other too and, and you know like the the rough parts i fully expect some team members to talk about how i couldn't remember how to navigate around that tunnel in the beginning of the stream like th this is the things that we do um it's it's incredible these are the people that you are supporting when you are diving into conversations with us when you are playing our game, when you are supporting our game. Um, yeah. So good. Um, this is a photo of somebody I'm not going to mention. I forgot that I had this one in, sorry. Uh, but I just thought it was a nice with the wall in the background and me sitting, I guess. Uh, we'll just move on. It's fine. Uh, last but not least, uh, yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I love this man. I love this man. Casper, oh, he's so good. Just a nice little uh, conclusion to uh, the, the photos. So, yeah, that's that's really a, a pretty massive retrospective. I I pulled so much more to show and we just don't have time for it, guys. Um, but like there are so many moments from the streams, for example, that uh, happened that were just so much fun. They were brilliant. They were hilarious. They were embarrassing for me, uh, but who cares? Uh, what a beautiful year it has been. So what's coming next?
So you know we've been working on stuff. It's about time we've at least shown you something. It's about time we just shown you something. Hmm. Everything looks familiar here. It's, it's definitely uh definitely seen that before. That's good. I wonder if I'm prepared for something like this. I would like to thank you all for showing up to the stream today. I think that we've had an absolute blast, honestly. I am so looking forward to teasing you with so many more things, because this, honestly, is like that much what we're got going on. So if you stick around for what we have in store for you next year, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun together. All right, guys, this is the conclusion of 2023 the next time that you and i are going to have a discussion with my face on it is going to be in 2024 so i hope that you all have a fantastic time between now and then your merry holidays and happy christmases and everything that goes on during these festive times uh, stay safe be awesome don't stop being awesome and uh yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be real good Gary, did you have any last thoughts or words you wanted to depart upon our lovely player base here? I just want to thank them for uh, allowing Rockfish to make uh, their dreams come true. They want to make this game and uh, allowing us all to be part of that. And you're all fabulous peeps. And uh, hope you have a wonderful festive period and a brilliant new year. We'll see you all very soon. Awesome. Thank you for that, Gary. All right, guys. Well, I've already said it, but don't stop being awesome. I'll catch you next time. Toodles! I mean, the stream is over, but in our hearts, we want just a little bit more. And man, I know I've said it like a billion times, but guys, seriously, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all my cohorts at Rockfish. Thank you to all of you in this beautiful community. It's taken a lot to bring this all together. What a wild ride it has been. Awesome. <clears throat> I put it
You know, something that I found fascinating is I was uh, beatboxing in the shower uh, the other day. I was trying to do, like, Christmas carols. <laughs> and it's really hard to, like, sing and beatbox at the same time. I don't know how it's done. So if somebody could send me, like, a YouTube link on how to do that, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But just stuff like... <laughs> I, like, I have no idea how to, like, use the words with that, and you, like, go out and you see people do it. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. It's absolutely absurd. It's crazy, just like you all are, and how incredible, ah, oh, this all has been. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Have an incredible break. Be awesome. And toodles.